Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and today we are continuing on with the Missing Linked Parts series of videos. In fact, I believe this will probably be the last video in this series. We're still talking about multi-measure rest, and we're going to get into the editing and designing options available to us for that. Uh, but first, let's get over to a part so we can actually look at a multi-measure rest. And uh, the way that we edit these is you just select the measure there and go to the edit menu, multi-measure rest, and we have this option here for edit. That will pull up the multi-measure rest edit window. We can also get there a little bit quicker if we right click, multi-measure rest edit pulls up the same window. Now, in this multi-measure rest window, I'm going to skip over the very first part of it. There, these H bars are actually shapes, and there's a selected shape number 35, which is the way that this is set up by default. We can actually change that and redesign that a little bit, but I'm gonna talk about that last. Uh, so let's talk about the next thing, adjust start point and end point. Now this is literally where the H bar starts and ends left and right in the measure. And these values are pretty relative to what the shape is. So the way this is set up by default, we have 0.1 here and negative 0.1, but if we actually increase this a little bit, now remember these are offsets from the right and left. So positive 0.2 here is gonna go further to the right on the left side, and negative 0.2 is gonna go further to the left on the right side. So the H bar is actually going to shrink just like that, right? So those values can be whatever you want for your uh, H bar. And in fact, they can actually be backwards too. So if you put a negative 0.1 start uh, point here and a positive 0.1 here, the H bars will actually get wider in the measure and you can see that it's almost so wide it's at the edge of the measure. So there's a couple different options there as well. And I should mention, what I'm doing here is I'm designing this individual uh, multi-measure rest with this window. We're gonna talk about the document options, which is pretty much the same exact thing, except it's gonna be on a global scale. So uh, pay attention here about how to work these things, and then you can transfer it over to the document options, and then it will apply to all of your multi-measure rests. The next option here is the number adjustments, and that's literally telling you where the number is relative to the H bar. And there's a horizontal position of zero, which means it's gonna center on the bar. And of course, we can change this if we really wanted to. We could do 0.5, which is gonna put it way to the right over there. Obviously, positive numbers will go right, negative numbers will go left. Um, and there's also a vertical value. Uh, now the reference point for this vertical position, if I actually put zero, you're gonna see that seven go in line with the fourth line of the staff there. For some reason, that's just how they decided to uh, give you a reference point there. So anything above zero will go above the, uh, the fourth line. We can put in something like 0.2 and it will get much higher above the, uh, the bar as opposed to this one over here, which I haven't edited yet. And also I believe if you're using inches here, what is that value? Um, negative 0.16 should center the number uh, within the bar. Uh, if you wanted to do that, if you're doing something different with your H bar, um, that's also possible as well. Let's get back to normal there. And then let's look at that next option after the number adjustment. There's two options here, start numbering at two measures is literally what that is. So if your multi-measure rest is seven, that's obviously higher than two, so you're gonna get a number there. But um, what you can actually use this option here for is if you wanna make the, the number disappear, just put in a value that's larger than the, uh, the number that exists there. So even just something as large as 999 uh, would make that multi-measure rest go away. Obviously anything less than seven than the number uh, would actually appear. But this is set at two, and uh, it's set at two in the document options, and there's a, a slightly different function of for this in the document options, which I'll get to uh, in a second, but let's put that back to normal and talk about the next option, which is the measure width. Now, in Finale, the widths of the measures are sort of calculated by uh, an algorithm that assigns a certain width to each rhythmic value. So an eighth note gets a rhythmic value, a sixteenth, a half note, etc., and then basically adds all of those together to give you a total measure width. Well, when you have a multi-measure rest, there's no data, there's no notes in there to actually add, so you, it just kind of gives you one final width here, this measure width of 1.25. Now I talked about this in the measure tool lessons. I think it was 19.3 we talked about measure width in depth. And the, the principle is, is that the, the measure widths 
are proportional. So I'm just gonna show you, oops, let's go here. I'm gonna show you that the width of this measure here is 1.33, this one is 1.17, this one is 1.47, etc. Now the widths don't get added up because you're gonna get a value that's gonna be less than the, um, less or more than where this normally would be. These are sort of force justified, these systems. So the widths themselves become proportional. So what that means is that since, since this width of 1.33 and the width of the multi-measure rest of uh, 1.25, those values are fairly close, which is why these two measures sort of almost look exactly the same width. If you wanted these multi-measure rests to be relatively larger than the other rests, just put a larger value in here. So if we put something like two, that's going to uh, give more relative width to this measure compared to the other ones. Now you can see that it takes up more space and actually push the next measure to the next line. And in fact, if you're doing commercial music uh, and you're trying to lay out four bars or eight bars a system with these multi-measure rests, like in this instance, if I were to lay this out for a recording session, I might do these eight bars on a system and put this one down here and then do next four bars, et cetera, and continue on that way. But when you do it like this, what you're seeing is the seven bar multi-measure rest taking up just about as much space as the measure. And these notes are really spread out. And this is not really the way that we'd want to see this. So um, when you're doing this type of work, uh, the best thing to do is really increase this measure width of your multi-measure rest vastly. And in fact, I always use a value of three here. And that actually gives me a much better look when you're doing things like this. Now you can see this seven bar multi-measure rest takes up most of this system. And then this guy here uh, is much more in proportion with the rest of the music. So uh, that's a, a good little tip if you're uh, laying out in four or eight bar phrases. And then let's look at the next option here which is for symbols. Now, if you check this, you can use the old school style of multi-measure rest where you're actually using symbols. And let's leave this as it is. Uh, uh, use symbols for rest less than nine measures. Seven is less than nine, so we click OK. And you can see instead of the H bar, it's using those old school symbols. Uh, and this first, the one on the right means one measure. This one in the middle is two measures. And this one is actually four measures. So four plus two plus one equals seven. Uh, that's how you're getting that seven bar multi-measure rest. Now, if you want to go even older school than that, <laughs> um, you can also match this value here with the start numbering at value here. So if you put nine, then you won't actually see the seven in this situation. And uh, I don't know if this is normal. I'm not an expert on these old school types of uh, multi-measure rests, but uh, if this is the way you want to see it, you only want to see the number when you get the full H bar, then uh, this is how that would work. Of course, if this was more than nine measures, then you would get a normal H bar. In fact, if I do the same thing over here, let's just do it on this 18 bar multi-measure rest and we'll check it for um, less than nine measures because 18 is obviously more than nine nothing's going to happen. You're still going to see that uh, 18 with the H bar there. So um, that's another option as well to get those uh, symbols. And the other thing in here, oh yeah, so we, we have this other option space between the symbols. This will just increase the space between the symbols. So if you want a little bit wider situation there, or if you want them a little bit closer together, uh, you can do something like that and get them real close together. Uh, it just depends on how you want to see that. Lots of different design options there. So let's go ahead and take a look at the document options. And we're going to go over here to multi-measure rests pane. And if you're looking at this window saying this is very similar to the other one, it, it is. It's almost exactly the same minus one extra option here called update automatically. So essentially, any changes that you make to these options in the document options will retroactively change all of the, the multi-measure rests in your piece. So if we were to do something like change the width here, let's make that three and hit apply, then you'll see all of the multi-measure rests that already exist are going to get a lot wider uh, in proportion to your music. So again, this they will affect all of these settings will affect all the multi-measure rests going uh, in your piece that are already there. Let's talk about this one extra option though, update automatically. This is really important to have checked in my opinion. Um, what this will do is that if you actually end up adding notes to your score, like I'm just gonna put in uh, some notes here in my flute one part. Oops, 
It's a weird looking 4-4 measure, but you get the idea. Um, you'll see that uh, in the part, it updated those multi-measure rests uh, by splitting them. So now you're never going to lose data. Uh, you know, Otherwise, this would be swallowed up in the multi-measure rest, and your flute player wouldn't know that you had added those added those notes there, right? So let's just undo all of this, go back to the score, delete this measure again. Um, just to illustrate this even further, I'm going to go into the document options and turn this off. And I'm going to do the same thing back in the score, add a normal looking measure here. There we go. That's plenty. And then we go into the part and all of a sudden, where's where are those notes? They don't exist. That's because that automatic update was turned off. We can always break this and then you'll see that your notes are there. So really kind of critical in my opinion to make sure that that option is checked. Um, I almost don't even know why they give you the option to be honest, um, but uh, it is there and you should really, really, really keep that checked. The other thing that's worth talking about in the document options as a slight, slightly different um, function than the individual one is this one that says start number at. And this also affects um, how many measures will actually be allowed to combine into a multi-measure rest. So currently this is set at two, right? So if I choose two measures and decide to create a multi-measure rest, it will create a multi-measure rest. However, if I try to do this on one measure, nothing's gonna happen. It's not gonna let me do that, right? If we go back into the document options and actually make this a larger number, let's make it four, right? What this is gonna do is that it will let me create a multi-measure rest with four measures, but it will not let me create a multi-measure rest with two or three measures, right? I can try and create it and nothing happens. Um, so if you really want to um, make it so that, you know, four bars is the minimum for multi-measure rest, you could do it this way. The other thing that you can do is actually set this to one, and then you can take any single empty measure here and turn it into a multi-bar rest. I have seen this on occasion. It does look weird to me to have this. I think more often you just want to see an empty bar like that. But um, it's certainly possible to do that, setting this uh, start at number with uh, one instead of two. Also, if you have this number uh, rather large, and make sure you're updating automatically, um, this can retroactively break all of your multi-measure rests. So if we hit apply, what you're going to see happen is that all of those uh, smaller than 12 multi-measure rests got actu actually got broken. So that's uh, that can be done as well. Uh, so just be careful about that. And then finally, let's go back to the beginning and deal with the, the shape itself, uh, shape number 35. And I'm going to do this from the uh, document options because you'll see this will affect all of the multi-measure rests. But this can also be done individually, um, going through the other method of just editing the uh, individual multi-measure rests. But let's see what we got here. We're going to press select. And you'll see that uh, shape number 35 is selected. And this is actually the H bar. Uh, this is sort of how this default document is set up. There's also number one here, which you can use, which will give you a slightly thinner multi-measure rest H bar. I don't know if you can see the difference. It's very subtle, but if I zoom in a lot, maybe you can see it. That's that's one. If I just hit undo, it will go back to 35. It just gets a little bit thicker there. So uh, it's possible to use that one as well. And of course, we can really use any shape that we want, but these two shapes are really going to be the only ones that uh, makes sense. So I'm not even going to do something silly like uh, actually use something else. But we can also redesign these a little bit if we want. And for this, what I'm going to do is actually duplicate this one so that I have a uh, unique one here at the bottom. And we're going to edit it. And we're going to get into the shape designer again. And I'm going to zoom in a little here. Let's go to 200%. Now, the H bar itself is actually a group of three lines. There's the, the uh, horizontal line and these two smaller vertical lines on the other side. And if we just, with the arrow tool here, the selection tool, just click, you'll get the, uh, the grouping of those items. And you'll see these little um, uh, pink uh, handles that we can adjust these. Now, I think the most useful thing to do here is if you want to shorten it or lengthen it. And we can certainly do that by clicking this handle here and just bringing it into there and then bringing this one into here. And uh, my advice here is to make sure that you try and keep this centered. If you kind of move this a little bit off, you'll see this little uh, central arrow, uh, central point here. You definitely want to make sure that your H bar is as centered as possible, both upwards, uh, both vertically and horizontally. Um, otherwise, it's not going to. 
uh, sit in the measure correctly. But that should do it. I just made it a lot shorter and we can click OK. And now I can use this shorter one. And when we hit apply, you'll see that the much shorter H bar um, gets put in that measure. Now these H bars are expandable. So you know if you do something like move this down, it will get longer. They're not fixed in width. They are a little bit expandable. So uh, there's certain uh, amounts of, of wiggle room that you can use to make these a little bit narrower and wider, but they will get you know uh, narrower still or wider still depending on how many uh, you know how wide the measure is on the system if that makes sense. Now we can actually fine tune this design even further if we want. Let's go into this shape designer a little bit. Now, like I said, um, this is a group of three lines, but it is possible to ungroup these so that we can edit the lines individually. Just go into the shape designer and choose this option for ungroup. And then what you'll get is three individual lines that you can kind of click if you're really careful. Uh, I've just clicked the horizontal line and I get two uh, handles which I can extend or not like that and you can even angle it which is a little bit weird um, and you can also select these lines as well. Probably the most useful or most likely thing that you're going to do to these is change the width and the way to do that is just select the one you want to change and go into the shape designer uh, menu here and go to line thickness and other will be chosen and then you can just enter a value here right now it's set to 0.05 if we make that 0 0.08 that will get a lot thicker um, we can also do that with the smaller lines here let's go here line thickness these are really thin in my opinion line thickness is set to 0 0.064 let's actually make those uh, 0 0.15015 and I'll make this one 0.015 as well. 0.015. Oops. And maybe that middle one is just a little bit too thick. Let's go back here. Maybe 0 0.08 is too much. Let's try 0.06. There we go. So now we have a, a little bit of a beefier H bar, and it's still on the short side. Um, we can always uh, group them if you just kind of drag select them again and regroup them like that. So now it's one item. And of course, we can again extend it uh, both directions, being very careful to make sure that you're remaining centered. I think that'll work. All right, so now I have a slightly different looking H bar, and we select that one. And uh, it's, you know, it's subtle, but, uh, you know, the end lines are a little bit thicker. The middle line is a little bit thicker, and I've made this a little bit shorter than the original, which usually used to come out to here. So that's how you would go about designing those H bars a little bit if you want to change um, how they look. Actually, this is kind of nice. I like this. This is a little bit thicker here. All right. So um, so yeah. So that's uh, that's how you do that. There's there's a lot of options. Of course, you can design those H bars individually. However, if you do it here, let me just point out that. Uh, you just have to be careful because if you actually from the edit menu from the multi measure rest edit of an individual one if you choose the shape selection and you know it's using 130 if you edit this this uh, item number 130 is still being used for all of the other uh, h bars so if i were to edit it here i would get um, uh, changes in all of them if i wanted an individual different h bar for this one particular uh, multi-measure rest I'd have to duplicate this again and then edit that one so that only this individual multi-measure rest was using that new H bar if that makes sense so just be careful when you're dealing with the uh, shape selection dialog box here um, otherwise you're going to end up changing them all which may be what you want to do but it might not be what you want to do so uh, just be aware of that all right, so I hope that helps. We've, uh, I've, I feel like I've beaten the multi-measure rest horse dead right now. So um, hopefully you've learned a lot about that. And uh, also the missing linked parts series of videos. I think this is probably going to be very useful to a lot of people. I hope this has helped. And, um, you know, once again, I appreciate you watching. Uh, as always, I appreciate if you were to subscribe. That would be amazing as well. And, uh, yeah, so there we go. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. My name is Jason, and uh, I will see you soon on the next series of videos.